seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. This is a special presentation of Caravan to Midnight, featuring a man I've uh, come to know over many years as being exactly as he presents himself to be, a researcher. And his research deals with many aspects of what we would call the quantum realm. He is Norbert Heuser. I have known him now for some years. He introduced me to... Uh, well, Pico Wave technology in, a, in the form of a device that actually produced an effect that I've told people about many times, and that was a, a comparison between wines, double blind, triple blind, worked every time. Flash this pen. This was his, his prototype, his first one. Flash this pen into the wine. Go over there and hide, hide in the corner so you can get two or three glasses. Just do one and then bring them. You bring two that are the same that have not been flashed with this light. Can't tell a bit of difference between them. Nobody could. Keep this going for a little while. 100%. When the glass of wine, that seemed to be the, the, best, the best medium for the test. It really did. When that glass of wine the one of the three, or the four, was presented to the person. In every case, the person said, this one tastes much better. 100% no exceptions, even worked on food. Now, this was several years ago, the better part of a decade ago. Since then, his product line has increased. In fact, I wear this SD1 Human Protect all day, every day, I literally never take it off. Maybe once in a couple of months or something for a minute, and then I put it back on. Now, you must understand that this is this is very esoteric stuff. Many people will not be prepared to receive this information. However, it has been validated to my complete satisfaction. And I want you to know that nothing in this program is intended to diagnose or treat or cure or prevent any disease. This episode, this program, featuring myself with our guest Norbert Heuser, is for informational purposes only. You watch, learn, and then apply what you've learned as you see fit. Norbert is not a doctor. I am not a doctor. We make no health benefit claim whatsoever. This is information. Information, information, and I think you're going to love it, and I think it will astound you. So, without further ado, the man behind IPC and the products therein, Norbert Heuser. Hello, Norbert. This is going to be a good one. Thanks a lot, John. You're too kind. Um, I don't deserve that, but I appreciate it. Um, it's good to be back with you on the show because I love to work with you and your audience. Well, it's mutual. Now, maybe I should say a few words about myself as an intro. Um, where do I come from? Well, my school career ended up smooth, but definitely with high school. I never went to college or university. Thanks God. I was always right. interested in life. No, I was always interested in life. I had the privilege to meet with exceptional good people who were willing to share their findings. I listened, and most importantly, I asked questions. It's not about what you know, it's about what you do not know. And to find out what you do not know, you have to ask questions, the right people. And I developed the principle in learning about life. If I found somebody was crucified in the public eye, I would run to that person and ask for more information, as at least most of them were into something worthwhile. I traveled so far 35 countries. 
I started alternative medicine uh, as a passion 40 years ago. I turned my passion of alternative medicine into a full-time profession about 15 years ago. This happened by pure circumstances as I wanted to save my life and the lives of my family and members from the danger at this time of cell phones, means electromagnetic radiation. When I saw there was nothing offered in the market which truly worked, I knew there must be a solution. Um, so I worked on it and some years later I came with a solution, which of course was the start of my company. I never wanted a company. I did other things. I never wanted a company, but I knew that if I don't do it, the big industry doesn't do it and the government doesn't do it. So fast forward, when I tried to find healthy water, as I had a solution for like my radiation, I wanted to have healthy water. And in 2015, when I looked into a truly working water filtering system, I realized how fraudulent, how ignorant many companies operate. I was fed up and decided to develop my own concepts. At this stage, I had no intention to manufacture again another product, but I needed a solution for myself. Um, if you ever find my presentation today or at any time there's something missing or not correct, please let me know. I'll be happy to learn more and I will edit in my presentation at any time. I keep learning all the time. I will never stop learning until the day I die and I guess at that very moment I will learn a boatload more. Looking back, I know that I, the road I took in my life was simply uh, my calling my calling to improve the condition on our planet, whether this is accomplished with my technologies and my products or somebody else's, it doesn't matter. We have to improve this planet condition and it's getting worse, but not better in a, in a broader scope. My clear statement as for today's theme is, as we talk about water, there is no solid health possible without healthy water. And more than 90% of the audience out there drink poor, harmful water, full stop. I'll see this all the time uh, when I give live uh, seminars and I test people. I see it all the time. I invite them, bring the water you consume to the seminar and we'll test it on you and we'll see. But 90% have definitely unhealthy water, maybe even more. That's a bit um, my opening about where I'm coming from and how I got there where I am. Well, there's no doubt about it. Every day we hear about something else in the water that's really bad for you, all these chemical uh, contaminants and, I mean, all kinds of things. Even radionuclides are in there and so forth. So, yeah, I mean, by now I think everybody understands that without healthful water, there will be no healthy human being. Uh, the human body will be challenged on one or multiple levels from poor exactly. water. water. Water's a huge problem all over the world. Decent drinking water. That's That's been going on for decades and decades. So, yeah, yeah we get it. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, let me give you, allow me to give you um, my introduction to water. And um, so, we'll take it from there. Um, the earth is depleted. No question. The earth is depleted. Um, the water we drink is poor, to say the least. The air is bad. Our oceans are dumped. Um, nothing else. And we have a lot of bad things going on, all against mankind. And of course, against flora and fauna. We ourselves, to my definition, are the most endangered species there is. Um, and ourselves, we kill ourselves, we commit suicide, we keep dancing beyond the grave. Uh, we think it's all fine and dandy because we have sexy entertainment, uh, fancy, uh, nice stuff. Yes, we have a lot of nice things in this planet. This planet. I, I'm doing a seminar which is called, if you want to do it one day, uh, the main inventions of the last 200 years, the main inventions are all counter survival for this planet. We enjoy them. They're sexy, they're rock and roll, but they are against the planet. Um, so, and the way we treat our planet, we deserve to vanish from this planet. Basically, every ant, every bee, every animal 
and planned does the right thing to survive, we are completely stupid. We commit suicide in steps and bits and pieces. We think everything we can do and we can finance, we should do. We should stay away from things which are insane, which have negative effects on nature on this planet, but we do them anyway. And uh, I have uh, my saying there, I have a gravestone, which I present in my presentation, which reflects everything I think. Rest in peace. Mankind is extinct because they believed the, the laws of nature were not valid for them. We think the laws of nature are not valid for us. We are part of nature, but the laws of nature are not valid for us. And we twist and bend them and stretch them beyond any control. And it's all because some people make money with it. It's simply always about money and control. It comes down to greed. Greed and neglectance of spirituality is the downfall of our planet. If we look at the Roman Empire, today they dominated the world. Tomorrow they're reduced to unimportance. Same thing happened with the Spanish and English Empire, the Germans and so on. Same may be happening now to the USA. The Chinese are taking over. They already took over many years ago. I said this in various seminars. I was spending a lot of my time in China. I was married to a Chinese lady. And I saw what was going on. And when I saw what was going on, definitely I left China not to go back. These societies were all dominant to a certain point. And then they fell and they missed the important points to be a successful and stay a successful, healthy society. Now, when the cell phones came out, no cell phone company had ever to prove that cell phones are harmless. Nobody ever. And they are harmful big time. We talked about this, you, John, we did in some of those shows, right? The entire world needs to be replenished with trees by the millions to create a better soil, to create a better climate, better water. We need more trees, billions of more trees, and we ignore it. People and government just ignore it. And to spread their 5G thread, let me call it the 5G thread, they even cut trees that 5G can work. Again, we are committing suicide in bits and pieces, and we seem to be too blind to see. Well, <clears throat> that's a bit of what we'd like to say up front when we talk about water. Well, especially in America, you have nowadays in municipal water fluoride, arsenic, chloramine, chloramine, chlorine, a lot of stuff. Water has been discussed, especially over the past 10 years. Unfortunately, much of the information out there is wrong sometimes out of context there are what i call lies betrayals misunderstandings not knowing not understanding and many assumptions and john is very simple every time somebody assumes it means you do not know otherwise you don't need to assume my target today now is to make you see what in a complete conceptual understanding and trust me it's going to be a long show. I will present to you the entire subject water as I worked it out over many years of research. There are many totally different parts of information I need to walk you through today. You may even say at times, what the hell has it to do with water, a Greek? Well, you'd see more than you can imagine or may have even heard of it. I hope so, that I can give you new impulses. Mm -hmm. My talk this after the show, you know and understand more about water uh, than 99% of all medical doctors because medical doctors have never been taught on university about water, not about like my radiation and other subject. This, what I'm telling you today, to my definition and understanding, should be something which is should be taught in school from basics. We are taught trigonometry. I cannot remember in my life I ever needed trigonometry, and I'm pretty old. But to understand the concept of water, will have a major influence of your entire life, the life of your family, more than you think. Remember, only 3% of the water on this planet is called, is, is drinkable water. We call it the water planet, but only 3% is drinkable. And we're talking about this, we're getting into trouble there. And what is the first thing what we'd ask when we discover a new planet? The first thing we ask, is there water? This by itself already improves the importance of water. It's all screwed up. 
So please allow me now to bring you some light on the topic, and I hope you can agree, understand. And if not, please don't agree with me or send me emails. Give me your criticism. Give me information I may not have. We you can know, Norbert, it, it occurred to me, not to interrupt, but I'll just jump in here quickly just for a, just a bit of information that many of the caravanners have heard already. But over the course of a four-year university course to become a medical doctor, medical students will have not 18 course hours, but literally over four years, only 18 hours of study that has anything whatsoever to do with nutrition. Where water is concerned, how about zero? There is no study of water. No hours are devoted to water at all. Over a four-year degree at the most prestigious university you can think of, over four years, you will not, as a medical student, study anything about water. Yes. Just a little confirmation, nothing more. Go ahead. No, no, no. Great. Uh, I had just the, the introduction was a bit of a long monologue. I want to get it out of my chest and get people some crash course where I'm coming from. Uh, no, no, you're completely right. And not only uh, water, they're not taught, for example, in um, like my radiation. Nobody teaches them the basics of dentistry. And to my definition, another show we can do that without healthy teeth, you cannot be healthy. So if I would have been a medical doctor, the first thing I would do when a patient comes to me, I would look at his dental records. But that's another thing for another day. Well, so long story short, please, ladies and gentlemen, I have a website, a landing page. Uh, if you have any comments, any criticism, which I love, challenge, uh, confirmation, new information, please feel free to contact me on this landing website page, and I'll be trying and happy to answer all the questions you have. All right. Improve, improve your life. Us. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, um, without any further ado, we really step into the subject of water, and the first point is your own well. Because the first thing what happens typically when I give seminars, some people come up and say first thing, well, it doesn't count for me, whatever it is, the problems, because I have my own well, and they don't understand that your own well as such means nothing in fact i tell people if you have your own well sounds good but it only it's only meaningful if at least once a year you have your water tested by lab at least once a year why you are diving into under earth water streams and you don't know 30 miles up from where you are what somebody dumps into the ground. And be aware as well, these water streams change their directions at time, over time. So it's not constantly the same quality, not constantly the same water. So if you have a well, great. If you want to be sure and healthy, once a year, if not two times a year, test it by a lab. Otherwise, uh, you're playing Russian roulette. Makes sense. There are entire oceans rivers streams little trickles yes. Yes. Uh, standing groundwater and it moves so exactly what seep what seeps from the surface of the earth seeps eventually down into the water supply so just a little reinforcement there nothing more well the mit i have to look up the exact number the mit did a study that every water which doesn't doesn't come from further down than i believe it was thousand feet um, is contaminated. MIT studied that and, and published that, not me. I have to look up that number again, how deep they dug to find out when water is not contaminated anymore. I may fill that in later in the show then. Good. So that's about the whale water. Now the next subject I would like to talk about very briefly, very short, is called cold water. Okay? Cold water. Uh, especially in America, more than any other country I've ever been, cold water is promoted. I go to a restaurant and they give me a glass of water full of ice. Full of ice. And right. when the Americans come down to Germany, which is my hometown, they complain that in the bar they gave them only water with three ice cubes. And they said, are you kidding me? Three ice cubes? I want ice. Now, what's the problem? The problem is 
our normal body temperature is supposed to be 98.6. Most of the people don't have this nowadays anymore. That's another subject for another show. But it's supposed to be 98.6 because all body functions are based on 98.6. This is God-given. Nobody invented that. It is how it works. The body needs 98.6 for all body functions. Now, when I drink cold ice water, it has typically a temperature of 42 degrees. 42. Now, the body has to compensate this low temperature of what you drink and has to do this under stress. So you put in your stomach, so to speak, uh, uh, like a bomb which explodes and the body has to deal with it under stress. It puts the body under stress. And I have another show where I say stress, chronic stress is the only reason you can become sick. Chronic stress is the only reason you can become sick. Chronic stress can be mentally or physically. And every time we drink cold water, ice cold water, happen so many things in your body which are degenerative. Now, uh, as I said, I spent a lot of time in my life in China. A Chinese person laughs about you. Well, they don't do it officially. They do it inside. Their face doesn't change if you drink ice cold water. A Chinese person, when it's very hot in the summer, he drinks hot tea or lukewarm water, but never ice cold water. And if your friend happens to be an opera singer, you didn't see an opera singer, you don't see them that they drink cold drinks, cold ice cold beer and water, because they know they're going to damage their vocal cords. The knowledge is there, you just have to think about it. So when I came to the US, people were surprised that I ordered the water without ice. And uh, later on, um, when I developed my product, I brought typically in most of the restaurants in my own water or my water gadgets when you spoke about how you change your water. So that's what I have to say about cold water. If you want to improve your life, that's a very easy step, a very easy step to improve your life, your health. Stop drinking ice cold water. And I tell you, after a transition period, you will not miss it anymore. I hope you do. Well, that's absolutely true. Any time that I have uh, grabbed, uh, I haven't done it in many years now, a bottle of deeply refrigerated cold water because I'm very thirsty and slug it down, instant stomach ache. Instant, even if you drink it slowly. If you complete yes. that bottle of water, you will have a stomach ache. At least that's what happened to me. So, yeah, I never really understood why, uh, here, drink some ice cold water with ice in the water. How can this possibly be good if your body's already overheated? Well, so I think I you just answered that. that question. No, it's, it's very simple. Yeah, look in history. For millions of years, people didn't drink ice cold water, they didn't know what ice cold water was. Right. <laughs> no fridges and one of the deep freezers. So, again, we live against nature. We think we can do whatever we want. Nature doesn't mean anything. Well, if God would have wanted us ice water, he would have delivered the fridge right from the day we were born 10 million years ago, right? But he didn't right. do that. Right. right, so talk about health. The next step, which may be for some of you uh, a bit extremer, um, is water and cancer. Now, this may be for some of you a long stretch water and cancer well what we're talking about water means is valid for every every illness and disease as i said earlier on to my personal opinion nobody can become be healthy stay healthy or become healthy without healthy water now let's look at cancer for example nowadays every third person is dying of cancer full stop the main reasons to my humble observation, experience, and opinions are the first reason to develop cancer is a mental instability. Keyword, psychomatics. In many cases, a loss within the family, like your spouse takes off with somebody else and leaves you alone, a loss of a child. All these things can cause cancer. There was this German doctor, Hamer, who has researched this topic for many years. And I was in contact with him 30 years ago. He researched causes of cancer patients. He worked in a hospital. And the hospital told him, you stop this research or we fire you. He said, I'm not going to stop. I know I'm something. 
because he interviewed cancer patients and found out that in most all cases, these people had these personal losses three, six months prior to start to develop cancer. They pulled his license, they put him into jail several times. Um, there's a long story. Interesting enough, uh, I have on my website a book called The Five Biological Laws of Nature, which is based on his principles of his findings. I don't sell books, but I encourage you on my website, there's a button books, where I recommend books which I think are worth reading. They're different. And uh, so I don't want to go further in his findings, but if you want to, want to know, look at his books and um, you can find uh, the explanation. There's no time now to do that, but again, I offer you the information. Good. Very good. Now, that's the main first reason for me. The second reason why people develop cancer is electromagnetic radiation. We, you and I, we have been talking about this topic many times on our show. And uh, John and I have seen people and information on my website, different talk shows we have done and webinars I've given under the, under the solutions I'm offering. Uh, on my website is a button um, talk shows where I have some shows with John and there's a button webinars where I talk about these things. So number two is electromagnetic radiation. There's no question for me. It may have nowadays the biggest number one reason for cancer. Um, reason three is then bad water. Reason three is for me bad water. And as we go through the show, you can see why I'm saying that. Number four is we're all too much acidic. And number five, we have all an overload of toxins. When I was a child, a youngster, a young man, I did not know anybody who died of cancer. People just died in their bed or car accident. Things like Parkinson, I didn't know anybody had Parkinson. Dementia, I didn't know anybody had dementia. All this stuff just developed mainly over the past 50 years. We are able to screw up this planet, our health, flora and fauna, basically to the most part over the last 50 years. To my opinion, they will never find any medication to treat cancer. Never, ever. Never, ever. They look in the wrong direction. Well, the motivation is to find a medication which they can sell for money and make trillions of money. They have collected over the last 50 years trillions of donations and investments from government, always with one target, to give the patients something which has a patent on it, make money, but not to solve the problem. They will keep going in the wrong direction. I look at them, I smile, and I shake my hands and I believe. They're blowing stupid money, wasting burning money, They'll never get a result, to my opinion, okay? That's my personal opinion. Where are the results of all these smart professor universities and these studies of trillions of dollars? No results, nonsense. They have a complete wrong approach. So, could we improve the medical condition of a person with water? Yes, to my opinion, yes. It not only improves it, but it's needed to make healthy possible changes. Absolutely. DNA, the building blocks of life, communicate with each other through water by emitting low frequencies, electromagnetic waves. There are many topics we talk about today, and uh, then you see uh, the puzzle, how it fits, right? So leaving cancer alone, I gave you some basic crash information, to my opinion. Um, we will touch the next subject, which is very close to the subject of cancer, which is water and medical doctors water and medical doctors have you ever been in a praxis and the doctor asked you hey tell me what water do you drink have you ever been asked by a doctor what water Not do you ever. Drink? absolutely never no or even how much except rarely yeah um said so we said they have no education in water um when doctors find their ways to my seminars, which some do, they typically come after and say, why were we not taught all about this in universities? What you're telling us today, they never explained to us. They taught us how to prescribe medication, but this holistic point of views and how the body works and dangerous EMF and what can be, we were never taught. Yes, but they never. most of them never looked into it. And I have a seminar which is called The Good 
and not so good doctor. Originally, I call it the good and bad doctor. And a friend of mine says, no, don't be Norbert. Don't say it's too strict. Be a bit more kind. <laughs> <laughs> I changed it. The good and not so good doctor. Where I talk about what differentiates a good doctor from not so good doctor. But, okay. So the medical doctor never asks you about water. The only thing he may say, oh, I think you're dehydrated. Drink more water. That's a stupid sentence. Because as I explained to you in a few, it's not about the water volume you drink to be hydrated. It's not about the water volume. It's about the water quality. I explained that. Um, so in my seminars, I always test people whether they're hydrated or not hydrated. And I can tell you, a conservative finger, 98% of people I test are dehydrated. 98% of the people I test are dehydrated. This does not surprise me. Uh, in fact, uh, I've referenced this many times. If you go to the uh, if you go to the uh, internet and just type in symptoms of dehydration, oh, you'll see the symptoms, but you'll also see statistics. And according to you know, right, everything from Doctor Google is correct, but it comes close. Your your percentage is much higher. They are saying seventy five percent of Americans are chronically dehydrated, meaning dehydrated all the time, and the other 25% are just dehydrated off and on, so it would probably go to the upper 90s. That's a great observation. Yes, and it's of course a question of what you call dehydrated and how to test it. Yeah. Uh, I do it for 40 years with the kinesiology muscle testing where I can test uh, a patient and in, in five seconds he's dehydrated or not. And I hate to hydrate them, and then I can see what does it look uh, to be hydrated. So uh, I have this um, image here, what my thoughts are about doctor. It's very brutal, but my honest opinion. 95% of all doctors are ridiculous. They're just a shame. 3% of the doctors I consider good. 2% of the doctors I consider fantastic. And I had the privilege to meet these 2 and 3% people, especially 2% people, many of them, and I keep looking for them. And again, in this show, The Good and Not So Good Doctor, I explain the difference. So that's my opinion about doctors. I have no problem to say this publicly, officially, in the face of doctors. And I did it the other day, funny enough. A group of alternative holistic doctors called me on a conference call because they said, um, we heard about you and your technology. Uh, we have this group here. We work together. Can you tell us what you do and your approach? I said to them, well, look, before I go into this, let me give you my opinion about doctors. I don't want you later to find out what I'm saying in seminars and webinars. I want you to know, put the cards on the table. Here's my opinion about doctors. And I showed them the graph you just saw. And they laughed. They laughed their butt off. I said, oh, what's going on here? And they said to me, look, we have a definition for doctors. And these doctors said, and quote what I'm repeating now, doctors are to the most part highly educated idiots. That's what these people said. All right. That about doctors and water. The next topic I would like to speak about is water, the importance of water. As I mentioned a few times today, Without water, nobody can become truly healthy. The most important topics in one's health is the personal, mental, spiritual, spiritual stability. People underestimate how the spiritual um, ability and awareness can help you to improve and to heal. The most important topic in the physical universe of human being, then people usually answer food. Food is the most important topic in the physical universe for mankind. No, it's not. To my definition, the number one most important topic in the physical universe is oxygen. It's the most important ingredient for our healthy life. The second most important ingredient for healthy life, and people answer again, oh, then it's monthly food. I said, no. People overestimate healthy food. The second most important is water. So right after oxygen, it's about water. Water is more important than food. Food comes only in a third. But the way people act 
oh, I eat healthy food, I eat organic food, and so on, so on. Well, organic food is nice, but nowadays it's already questionable. Uh, how organic is organic? And I tell people, if you if you drink unhealthy water, 50% of your organic food money you, you spend is already wasted right from the get-go. Uh, basically, you kill your digestive system and consequently your health. The DNA, the building blocks of life, communicate with each other through water. As I said, by emitting low-frequency lake migration waves. I dare to suggest that most of our audience today consume bad water. But the same counts for hospitals. You're in hospital, become healthy, and they give you bad water. The same counts for restaurants who cook with bad water. Now, there's something which is called pristine water. Um, pristine water, the original water on this planet, let's say up to, let's say 300 years ago, maybe 200, maybe 200 years ago, you could drink any water on this planet anywhere. It was fully blessed with high level of energy and all the ingredients you needed. But the percentage of people nowadays to have access to this prestige, prestige water, um, sorry, pristine water, these people, how many? Hardly anybody. So as we cannot have access to it, it means we need to treat our own water. We may, we may have to make our own healthy water. The water from the city is not healthy, and we'll talk about water in the stores is not healthy at all to the most part. Good. Um, the body has emergency programs. The body has emergency programs, and these emergency programs are, for example, fever. Fever is not an illness. It's an emergency program of your body telling you, hey, something is going wrong, and the body tries to fix it. Pain is not... A problem it's an emergency program if the wall if the body makes you feel pain that means something is going on here if you have a pain in the abdomen well if the pain would not knock on your door how would you know something is going wrong you wouldn't know right sleep is an emergency program i've tried two three times in my life to overcome sleep and sleep kicked my butt i fell asleep while driving in the car it happened once I don't know, for a second, half a second, I don't know, nothing happened, but it was a lesson. When your body has a need for sleep, you cannot ignore it endlessly. You will suddenly fall asleep without noticing and without wanting to. The body takes over and says, this is emergency now. I don't care what you want. I don't care you want to drive home. You cannot. You need sleep now. Another one is hunger. Every time you feel hunger, the body tells you, hey, you're dying. If you don't eat now, you will die. I need these nutritions and vitamins and minerals. I need them now. And the other one we're talking about now is thirst. Thirst is an emergency program. The body tells you, look, you are in need of liquids, of water, of good water. 300 years ago, it was not your need of uh, uh, orange juice uh, or, or Red Bull. No your need of water. Right. Right. And uh, so water thirst is an emergency program. And you got to treat your body accordingly that the emergency program will be handled. And this is how it works with water and the emergency program. All right. Any questions so far? No, no, I'm right with you. Good. Thank you. But kick my butt if needed, you know. Hit my body. So let's talk about the next subject, which is the water market. Yes, there's a water market. Oh, yes. And the water market is enormous, and there are things going on, not always for the good. There are hundreds of companies out there who offer heaven on earth with their water um, or protect you from cell phones, electronic like radiation. And most of these companies don't do what they promise. There are millions, billions of products on this planet which are a disgrace. And I'll be happy to see if there are hundreds and thousands of companies or 10,000 companies which make great products. I don't know personally the expression competition. I always say other companies who make good products as well. I love that. We cannot have enough good products, good companies, good manufacturers on this planet. They're not enough because most going for crap. 
cheap crap with no quality. Um, if it's my product or somebody else's product, when we talk about water now, it doesn't matter. It's very simple. If it works, it works. We used to say in alternative medicine, who heals is right. But go and start using truly healthy water. The problem is that the consumer, the average consumer, cannot judge what is healthy water. So that's a part of the show to make you understand. Um, you can say that clearly that most municipal water in the communities is bad, poor water quality. Even water, most solely in stores, and even health food stores, is unhealthy, to my opinion. To what percentage? 70, 80, 90, 95 percent, whatever. Main reason is that most sold water in bottles is what is called reverse osmosis water, which, to my opinion, is the devil, and we'll talk about this towards the end of the show. Why reverse osmosis water, to my humble opinion, is the devil. And when they offer in those uh, food stores or even health food stores, they have these big pump stations where you can put a gallon of water, pump it, and you pay by the gallon. Most of these pump stations are, again, reverse osmosis water. And why is it bad? We'll talk about it by the end of the program. Now, okay. water used to be handled and controlled by the government. And nowadays, that's not true anymore completely. Um, big water companies, big companies, primarily such as uh, Danone in France, Coca-Cola, and um, what's the Swiss company name again? Um, Christ, um, Nestle? Nestle, thank you a lot. Nestle, thank you, thank you. Um, they control the water. And how they do it, we'll talk about this in a second. And uh, so mark, wa water is a market. Don't forget, like oil, like cigarette, like drugs, water sure. is a market. Sure. And they do all kinds of tricks to, to do that. And this is why I call it the control of water. It's not more only a market, it's a control of water. So how does it happen? Years ago, you used to have hundreds of small little companies producing water, hundreds, all over the places. Um, and everything was seemed to be going fine. And people think nowadays water is not a problem. I tell you that water is, we have a crisis with water. You, do, you may not realize it because you open the, open the water tap, it seems to be okay, right? Wait to see. Um, we are in a water crisis, and a bigger crisis than energy ever would be. Um, who controls the water? Not the government anymore, really. You have these Coca-Cola, Danone, Nestle. For example, Coca-Cola has uh, about 135 beverages in the market. 135. When we think about Coca-Cola, we think about there's one product, right? Um, now, the water problem consists of the questions of price, quality, and amount available especially for the underprivileged. So what these companies did, systematically, they turned, to my opinion, small companies into bankruptcy or bought them out. They bought them flat out. So they got themselves self shelf space. So you see this water product, blah, 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 for the last 10 years on the shelf. What you don't realize, if you would turn the back of the bottle, you see who owns that company. And you see that mainly these three companies own these water companies. And what they did, again, to my opinion, they bought these brands, which a lot of people think about greatly. I don't I don't quote any names here now. I don't want to bash somebody. But names, you all say, oh, yeah, that's a great water. That's a good, healthy water. Yeah, it used to be. I agree with you. It used to be. But these companies took over, and they filled in their cheap, compromised water to make more profit. And they got themselves shelf space. Turn the bottle and read the label. Um, so these companies then, besides buying up the small companies, they bought the water rights in USA, Canada, India, Africa, by pumping groundwater, and the pumping the groundwater, the groundwater level sank. And uh, there is a woman, I love her, Marion Schimmelfanik, a German woman. She wrote a book. Unfortunately, that book is not available in English, only in German. The title translated says, 
the water and beverage mafia. The water and beverage mafia. And uh, today I will quote a few things from uh, her findings. He's just phenomenal. I love him. So here is a quote from the CEO of Nestle. He says, Mr. Maucher says, he was, he was president or CEO from 1990 to 1997. He says, water is getting scarcer worldwide. That's why we want to control the sources. Again, water is getting scarcer worldwide. That's why we want to control the sources. And his follow-up man, the president of Nestle, Sam, said, water is, of course, the most important raw material that we still have in the world today. Again, water is, of course, the most important raw material that we still have in the world today. It's about whether we privatize the water supply for the population or not. Guess what? So Nestle bought pumping rights in California. They had the rights in a year to pump 26 million gallons of water. Keep that number in mind. 26 million gallons of water in a year. Yeah. You got an idea, John, how much they paid for that? I have no idea how much they paid for that. $700. Sounds like a good deal for somebody. <laughs> Especially California, where they have uh, water droughts all the time, right? And of yeah. course, the water levels sank. Now, they did the same thing in the uh, village of Hope in Canada. 70 million gallons a year. Of course, they paid more money for that. They paid $800. Uh. Right? They paid $800. Nestle, good food, good life. Wow. This is a Saturday Night Live comedy. Now, if you want to learn, what does that mean? What does that mean? Look at these figures here. I hope you can read them. So, I made a statistic to show you if you buy bottled water. Let's take in the middle, Dasani. Dasani is a Coca-Cola brand, most likely the most sold bottled water in America nowadays. The cost for a gallon of Dasani is $1408. <laughs> Compare this with your gas prices, which are high, but that's... So you pay for a Dasani $14 a gallon. Now, if we consider a family of four people, they need four gallons of water per day to drink and to prepare food, coffee, etc. Not to take shower. A typical family of four needs four gallons a day. In a year, with Dasani, that counts up to $21,000. I believe that most of the people are not aware how much money they spend on bottled water. I'm certain of it. And in a five year, that means $105,000. <laughs> in 10 years, they spent $210,000. Right? And I see people schlep all the time in the food markets and so on, these big boxes of 20, 40, whatever bottles of water at the time and so on and so forth. People don't think. That's not, no, not, not new, I guess. But I want to show you this overview here um, to get you an idea. To get you an idea if somebody buys bottled water. We're talking about later about the plastic ones. But just the idea of how much money you spend. And I compared it with a good water filter system uh, where you spend in a month $510 on the top line in five years, $2,500. Okay. So people don't want to invest money in creating their own healthy food, their own healthy water. Food creating is difficult depending on where you live and how you live. But water, to create your own healthy water? No, this is not difficult at all. Not at all. But then they refuse the idea of um, buying into the machinery, into products to make healthy water, um, which nowadays with my technology is not a big miracle anymore. 
but uh, instead of a one-time investment and finance it like a, a new roof or a new car, they'd rather buy a new car in 10 years, three times, than <laughs> saving $120,000. What a joke. All right, this is about the control of water. And the control of water is happening through these big companies, and it will become worse. It goes that far like in Africa. They bought water rights. They pumped the groundwater. The groundwater level sinks, and the farmers, in consequence, have a problem to work their farms with water. Their wells dry out because they're not deep enough. And then they can buy 10 minutes later in a, in a supermarket their own water fill up in plastic bottles. Yeah. That's a perversion. That's yes. perversion. That's exactly what it is.